Alright, get get uh, the gauges and what I'm doing, okay? So before I even start, I want to make sure I'm less than 90 PSI, right at about 90, because I know my air is going to be pumping into my tanks. So I'm going to do a safe start that shake this. My lights are illuminated on my dash, and this is pulled. Okay. Go ahead and start it. So right now, air is pumping into my tank. I'm going to go ahead and do a governor cut out test. For this test, I'm watching my needles rise. As soon as they stabilize, that's the point in which the governor cuts out. So I'm going to go ahead and increase engine RPM to make it go a little faster. My needles are still rising. I'm waiting for them to stop. All that little bullshit talk you don't have to say, but I think it's good yeah. to say it. So anytime you have like just no talking, it's just it's awkward. Not right? awkward, yeah. So my needles are still rising, waiting for them to stabilize. Still rising. Okay, I can see that my needles have stabilized. They've stabilized at approximately 121 PSI. And uh, that's good because it happened prior to 130 PSI. So I'm good on that test. For my next test, I'm going to go ahead and do a governor cut in test. For this test, I'm going to decrease air pressure until the needles start to rise again. At the point in which they rise is my governor cut in. It can happen no less than 85 PSI. I hit it. I'm going to chill out for five to seven seconds. Go ahead and hit it. Chill out for five to seven seconds. Don't say that. You know, just chill out. Yeah. I'm waiting for my needles to start rising. Turn at my needles, they're stable. Okay, I can see that my needles started rising. They started rising at approximately 103 PSI. And that's good, because it happened prior to 85 PSI. So for my next test, I'm gonna make sure my low air pressure warning device system works. For this test, I'm gonna deplete air pressure until a light is illuminated on the dash and a siren goes off. All right, you can see that the light's on. You can hear an audio alarm. It came on at approximately 70 PSI, which is good because it needs to come on between 55 and 75 PSI. For my next test, I'm gonna go ahead and do an applied leakage test. For this test, I'm gonna build up full air pressure. Because we wanna check our system for leaks, we wanna have full air pressure. It's gonna make them leak faster. So we're just gonna build up some air pressure here. Needles are rising. I think this video is going to help you tonight, right? Yeah, yeah. Good. Definitely will. I I'm should a, have done it already. Yeah. That's my bad, dude. I'm going to study all night. Just burn the midnight oil tonight. You'll be all right. Yeah. Hey, right after I hung that fucking bass and I seen you, I went out to Brookside. I hung me a fucking three-pounder. First Real? fucking cast. Yeah. On a Yamasenko 5 inch uh, watermelon. So, anyway, I got a full head of hair. Okay. So, we're going to go ahead. This is tricky now. This is where people fuck up. We're going to go ahead and shut the engine off. Okay. Our, our parking brake's engaged, so we don't have to worry about shit like rolling. We're going to push in the clutch, put it in gear, and then we're going to push in the parking brake. Wait for the needles to settle. Get your stopwatch ready. Okay. Go ahead and stand on the brake, wait for them to stabilize, start your clock. We're going to go ahead and wait one minute and uh, see if they lose any air pressure. You're allowed to lose no more than 3 PSI in one minute. Okay. And I've done this test a thousand fucking times. We're not going to drop one PSI, so we're going to go ahead and pretend one minute has gone by. One minute has gone by. And my needles did not drop more than 3 PSI in that minute. In fact, they dropped 0 PSI. So that's a good test. For my next test, I'm in a really good position to do it. We're going to go ahead and make sure that my spring brakes come on automatically. 
So we're, for this test, we're going to deplete air pressure until the parking brake pops out. It needs to pop out between 20 and 45 psi. All right, we can see that the parking brake popped out at approximately 27 PSI, which is good because it popped out between 20 and 45, so we're within our manufacturer's specifications on that. Now to finally complete this thing, we're gonna go ahead and start up the truck. My parking brake is applied. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back into neutral to be safe. Check my lights, everything looks money. We'll go ahead and start it. Build up some air pressure. We're gonna go ahead and check our parking brake. For this test, I'd like to ask you to buckle up. Don't really fucking buckle up, though. But, did you tell the, the yeah. person that? You know, I usually just tell them to buckle up as soon as they get in the fucking truck, just because you you're gonna forget. forget. I usually perform this test when I got like 90 PSI, 100 PSI, something like that. Alright. We're gonna go ahead and test our parking brake. To do this, the parking brake has to be engaged. We'll go ahead and put it in first gear. We'll try to roll this vehicle forward. You can see right there that the RPMs dropped. The vehicle tried to roll but was being held by the parking brake. That tells me that my parking brake's working well. Now we're gonna check our service brake. For this test, we're gonna go ahead and put it in first gear, put on the service brake. We're gonna push this in. We're gonna roll the vehicle forward five miles an hour and hit the brakes. All right, you can see that my vehicle did not go left, it didn't go right, I stopped straight and everything is working well.